Phoenix Writing Center's video walkthrough, the APA 7 Style Guide. In this video, we will discuss some general information about APA, including which disciplines use it and why, formatting guidelines for the student edition of APA 7, rules for creating in-text citations, which are also known as parenthetical citations, and how to correctly create references for sources, including examples of some of the most common types, like books, scholarly journals, and articles. APA is the official publication guide of the American Psychological Association. The manual provides guidance on how to document sources, including in the body of a paper, as well as on a references page at the end of the document. It also includes specific guidelines for how papers should be formatted, including organizational tools like section headings and appendices. There are two general ways of using APA. One of these is for students, which is what we'll cover in this video, but APA also provides a manuscript publication guide for professionals and researchers, which you can find more information about on the APA website. Even though APA is the guide for the American Psychological Association, it's used in many fields beyond psychology. In fact, on a college campus, it is the most widely used citation style, and it's the preferred guide for those in the social sciences, business, nursing, and education. Its wide reach means that all students will likely be required to use APA at one time or another in their college career. The seventh edition is the currently in-use edition, and it was released in late 2019. If you're watching this video because you're making the transition to using APA 7, Please know there are many similarities, but important differences in formatting recommendations, particularly on the cover page, which will be covered in a later slide. Like most documentation styles used at universities, APA requires that all text be double-spaced, including on the cover page and the references page. In addition, you should avoid extra spaces. Only press the enter or return key once each time. You should also use one-inch margins throughout. This is the standard in both Microsoft Word and Google Docs. While APA does not provide a specific font that should be used, their guidance does state that the font you choose must be clearly legible and accessible on all computer systems to avoid conversion issues. They recommend fonts including 11-point Calibri, which is the default font in Microsoft Word, or 12-point Times New Roman. Please note that because 12-point Times New Roman is considered an academic standard, your professors may require that font. If this is the case, or if your professor makes any recommendations that are not standard to APA, you should follow their guidelines over the APA guide. As previously noted, there are some differences in what the cover page looks like in APA 7 as opposed to previous editions. The image on the right shows a properly formatted APA 7 cover page. Begin by adding the page number in the top right of the header of the document. Note that it should be in the same size and font as the rest of your paper. You'll then type the title of your paper, centered and in bold. Be sure to press enter a few times so the text is close to the true center of the page. After this, press enter twice, the only time in the entire document this is needed, and type your name. Next, you should type the department of the course and your university affiliation. In our case, it's acceptable to type IU Southeast as opposed to Indiana University Southeast. The next line should indicate the course number and you may also write the course name. Next, type your professor's name. Finally, the date the paper is due, writing out the entire name of the month rather than the number. Before we enter in a conversation about what in-text citations look like, it's important to touch briefly on how APA requires formatting direct quotes taken from sources. If the direct quote is 40 words or fewer, you will simply embed that into a sentence as seen in this example. Note that a direct quote cannot stand alone as its own sentence. It must be introduced in some way in your own words. In a direct quote, you are also required to provide the page number in the in-text citation if there is one available, such as if you are quoting from a book or a journal article. It's acceptable to omit this if there are no clearly accessible page numbers. If your quote has more than 40 words, you must use what is referred to as a block quote. Block quotes are set apart from the text by each line being indented one time from the left margin. This can be seen here. 
Block quotes are also unique in that you do not need to use quotation marks around them, as the difference in indentation indicates to the reader that this is a direct quote. Block quotes must be used sparingly. If you are using a quote that is 40 words or longer, ask yourself if all of this information is truly necessary. It's much preferred that you use shorter direct quotes or paraphrase the quote whenever possible. Now that you're familiar with how to format quotes, we can move on to discuss in-text citations. In-text citations must be used whenever you are directly quoting a source, but also any time you summarize or paraphrase one. APA provides guidance on two forms of in-text citations. The first is referred to as a narrative citation. Narrative citations are those that bring up the bibliographic information, like the author or website, and the sentence itself, as in this example. In this instance, the Pew Research Center is considered the organizational author, and they are named, and the year the research was published immediately follows in parentheses. Narrative citations also include signal phrases. In this example, the signal phrase is indicates that, but other common signal phrases are according to and as stated by. You should also note that when using a narrative citation, you are not also required to cite the source again at the end of the sentence. The only exception to this is when you have directly quoted a source. In this instance, you must provide the page number after the quote in parentheses. The other form of in-text citations that are used in APA are referred to as parenthetical citations. In a parenthetical citation, you will provide all of the required bibliographic information in a set of parentheses at the conclusion of a sentence or after a direct quote is used. This information is typically an author name, year, and page number. In this example, you'll see that after the completion of the direct quote, the author's last name and the year of publication are provided. These are always separated with commas in APA. Because this is an online newspaper article, there are no page numbers, and so that is omitted even though the information is directly quoted. The punctuation for the sentence always goes after the in-text citation is closed. This is because the reader should be aware of which sentence the in-text is referring to. To facilitate this, it must be included as a part of the sentence. In APA, you may always use either narrative citations and in-text citations, and you will generally find that authors use blends of both types in their writing. Neither type is preferred over the other. If you have a single author, you will merely need to provide the author's last name and the year of publication in your in-text citations for that piece, as seen on the previous slide. There are many times, though, when a single author is not the only listed, and even cases where you may not have an author listed at all. This slide will provide examples of how to navigate some of those trickier in-text citation situations. If you have multiple authors, the way you format the in-text citation depends on how many. If two are listed, then simply provide both names in the order they are listed on the source. Separate names with an ampersand rather than the word and in APA. As always, you will then provide the year. If you have more than two authors, however, which is very common with academic articles, you'll cite those this way. Provide the last name of the first author listed and then write et al, which is an abbreviation that means and others. This is the case whether you have three authors listed or 15 authors listed. If you do not have an author, which may be the case for many web-based sources, you will use part of the title of the source as seen here. If the title is longer than two to three words, you may shorten it and only use the first couple of words. The title must be in quotation marks inside of the parentheses. Sometimes you may have an author but can't locate a date for the source. If this is the case, simply write ND in place of the date, separated by periods. You should strive to use sources that do contain both named authors and listed dates as they are important parts of establishing your credibility as a researcher but this won't always be possible, and so it is okay to use these sources sparingly if they appear credible otherwise. Before we go into specifics about how to create citations for the references page, let's first touch briefly on some of the general guidelines regarding setup and formatting. First, be aware that all of your references must be in alphabetical order. If you have multiple sources by the same author, base which comes first on the title of the article or book. Next, remember to double space your citation just as you do the rest of your paper. You'll also need to use hanging indentation on your references page. You'll see this on the examples on the next slides. This means that the first line of every citation is flush with the left margin, 
and every subsequent line of a citation is tabbed over one time, so that it looks like the rest of the lines hang from the first. You can set this up by going to Paragraph and Spacing Options in Microsoft Word. Finally, be aware that one mistake students make is that they don't ensure that the first component listed on a citation matches what's in the in-text citation for that source. This is easy for author names, but for those sources with no authors, be sure that you are carefully matching up in-text with the references page. In these slides, I'm going to walk you through creating some of the most common types of citations for the sources used in university courses. First, let's discuss books and book chapters. If you're reciting an entire book, begin by providing the last name of the author and their first initial. You will never provide the first name of authors in APA to avoid potential bias. After the author's name, provide the year of publication in parentheses. Year is always immediately following name of the author or title of the source in the absence of an author. This is because APA places great value on currency of sources. If you do not have a date, place N.D. in the parentheses as you would in an in-text citation. Next, in italics, provide the title of the book. Note that only the first word of the book title is capitalized. Finally, list the name of the publisher. If you are citing a chapter from a book, or if you are citing an article or piece from an anthology, use this citation style. As with the whole book citation, you'll first list the name of the author and the year of publication. Next, write the name of the chapter or the anthology piece. This is neither italicized nor in quotation marks, and only the first word is capitalized. Then, write the word in and provide the full name of the book. In parentheses, place the page numbers of the chapter and conclude the citation by stating the name of the publisher. The most common citation type you may run across while writing papers is that of a scholarly journal article. These can be tricky for students, so on this slide I'll discuss how to cite both a print journal and one found online. If you're using a print journal, you'll use this reference type. Note that there are multiple authors listed here, which is common for journal articles. List all of their names, separating the last with an ampersand. Do not change the order of the names from how they are listed on the article. This is how you would cite an article with up to 20 authors. After this, list the year the article was published. Next, provide the name of the article title. In article titles, you capitalize the first word, the first word of a subtitle, and any proper nouns. No other words are capitalized. After this, list the name of the journal. This should be italicized, and in contrast to article titles, all main words should begin with capital letters. Then provide the volume and issue number. The 44 in this example is the volume number, and it will always be listed first on bibliographic materials. Note that it is also italicized. The 5-6 are the issue numbers that this particular article was found in. Conclude the citation with the page numbers of the article. Since students tend mostly to focus their searches on library databases, it's far more likely that you will be using online journal articles. You'll note that this example is organized almost identically to the print version, except that you provide the URL of the example at the end. This needs to be the stable URL, which is always provided on library databases, but it is not the URL in the address bar of your web browser. It's important to look for the word stable URL on the database and use that one. You may also use the DOI in place of a URL if one is provided. The DOI is the Digital Object Identifier, and it is a series of numbers provided uniquely to every journal article. Someone searching for an article you cite will be able to find it using either the stable URL or the DOI, and so you may use either one. Finally, let's discuss how to cite electronic and web-based sources, as those are also quite common. One problem students frequently run into while researching is that many websites do not name authors. While, as previously noted, this means you must exercise due diligence in citing these sources or not based on their credibility, it does not mean that you can't use these sources. If you choose to cite a source with no author, use this citation type. In italics, provide the full title of the website. Again, the first word of this title must match how it is listed in your in-text citation so that the reader and your professor can see that they align. Then provide the year and the URL. 
Sometimes, though, the website may have an author. In that case, cite the source like this. Note that you will provide the name of the author first, the same you would in any other citation type. List the year of publication, and then the title of the website goes into italics. In this example, Grammar Girl is the publisher of the website. If you have a publisher who is different from the author, you may list it after the title of the website. Then, give the URL as in other web-based citation types. An increasingly common citation type is a YouTube video. For these, see this example. Begin by posting the username of the YouTube creator who posted the video, and then provide the date the video was published. Next, give the full name of the video, with only the first word and the first word of the subtitle capitalized. Then, in brackets, write the word video. You will then need to list the publisher as YouTube and provide the URL for the video. If you have additional questions about APA or other writing concerns, or if you'd like to schedule an appointment to work with a writing consultant, please visit our website at ius.edu slash writing center. We have more APA materials available there, including sample papers and sample references with more citation types than were covered here. You can also follow us on social media by using the links on our website. We hope to work with you soon.